Hello, I'm River, and welcome to my Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace paint series. Today, I'll be painting Dante, the legendary devil hunter. Dante's deck uses a variety of different cards to enable him to switch stances like he does in the video game, along with his Rebellion, Balrog, Coyote A, and Ebony and Ivory Guns, he racks up combos. I start the same way I do any other model, by trimming the mold lines. These are prominently found on the folds of the jacket, the extremities, along the blade of the sword, a little bit around the guns, the boots and pant legs as well. I give Dante a prime of uniform gray, and I go ahead and I begin the painting process. For a idea of the scale of the model, here is a monster can for scale. You know, gotta get that power from somewhere. I start off with Cambian Crimson, Order it down and apply two thin coats all over the jacket. I'm careful to not get on the undershirt or the part where the undershirt sticks out of the folded sleeves. With some Necromancer Cloak, I go ahead and I paint the pant legs and the boots. You could choose to do the boots a different color. I also paint the hair this color so that when I paint it white, it'll have a dark sort of undercoat that you can see between the strands. Also make sure you get the fingerless gloves. Some underdark indigo, I go ahead and I begin painting the undershirt. His undershirt sleeves kind of stick out a little at the ends of the folded back jacket sleeves, so be sure to check that out. Fair skin, I go ahead and I paint Dante's skin starting with his face, his arms, and fingers. He has a bit of chest showing from his very deep v-neck shirt, so make sure to get that. If you want to add a little 5 o'clock shadow, add a little gray to the skin tone in order to sort of give him that appearance of uh, unshaven. With gunmetal, I go ahead and I paint the rebellion, as well as the ivory pistol. There's lots of little divots on these when you're done that, make sure to get the tiny little hidden metal skull right between his shoulder blades. Some lawful white. Go ahead and I produce a dry brush, which I use to paint Dante's hair. You want to make sure you get the little bits in front of his face as well. Some shadow wash. I very generously coat all of the clothing. Starting with the undershirt, and I work my way out. There's lots of small little details that'll really take the wash well. I use a 2 to 1 wash to water ratio for this. I avoid any of the skin because we'll be using a different colored wash later. You want to make sure you get all of the metal pieces as well. His sword, his gun. You won't notice too much of the wash on the pants, but it will add a certain depth. I go back, use the wash on the hair again, just to dull it out a little to bring it back up later. With a little bit of flesh wash, I go ahead and I make sure all of Dante's skin has this wash, sort of adding a bit of shade. I pull away from the wash so that I don't quite saturate the skin too much to take away from the natural skin color that he might have. Turning with Cambrian Crimson, I just sort of very carefully edge highlight the various outstanding pieces of Dante's jacket. The degree that you do this is up to you. I try to edge highlight the entire coat and sort of give little highlights throughout the various raised parts on his clothing. There are several little fluted bits on his back and I kind of just put a line down it to make it look like it's catching light all the way down, while avoiding any of the gaps where the wash might have sunk into. If you think it looks better, the natural coat that it became after you applied the wash, you don't have to highlight. This is just a choice that I made to sort of try to make it pop a little more. Make 
sure to water down your paint before you do this because that is makes the highlight more believable. Coming back with Lava White, I give a, another quick but lighter dry brush to Dante's hair. I make sure to get the little strand in front of his face as it kind of stands out. Gunmetal again, just going to very carefully edge highlight the blade and the gun. Rebellion has a flute down the center. I just give that a highlight, along with the decals on the weapon itself, such as the ribcage, skull, and crossguard. With matte black, I go ahead and I coat the base with this entirely, leaving out the little direction facing edge so that I can color that later. Speaking of which, I take some Rust Monster Orange and just very, very carefully color the direction facing marker on the base of the model. This will help understand which direction Dante is facing, which is important when using certain attacks in the game. And with that, I call my model done. You can do a little bit more, come back and do a highlight on the skin on certain parts, but I felt like it looked alright. Another thing you could do is take a type of gray and kind of highlight the shoes and pants. You could even do this through a dry brush. But with that, that is the last of my core box for the Devil May Cry Bloody Palace board game. If you liked the video, leave a comment and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.